I'd always wanted to write crime fiction, or write mi a mystery novel, something like that. I, um, even when I was writing novels in my teens and my 20s, that's the kind, I always wanted to write those. And I think it's in many ways because more than any other kind of fiction, crime fiction needs plot. It needs a really strong plot. And for me, plot is the spine that goes through the story. And I really like that strong spine, that strong narrative that drives a story that's like momentum. And, and so I think in many ways that's why I'm drawn to, to crime fiction. It, it needs plot, and I need plot to write. I can't write something unstructured. I need that, uh, I need that structure. And then once you have that structure, you can do anything with it. You can write about anything. You can comment on social issues. You can, you can do anything you want. But I need that structure. When I start writing a novel, I have a, a pretty good idea of what it's about. And I know who did what and who did what to whom. And I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going to end up, where my end point is. And when I know, when I know those things, I start writing the book. Uh, but I can't plan out everything ahead of time because I find that the opportunities that exist in a novel don't present themselves to me until I get to them. I can be writing and think, oh, I could do this or I could do this. Those things I don't know before I start, but I like to know my ending before I begin. I think I, everyone's different. All the writers that I know, including crime writers, are different. Um, but I think that a novel that is so heavily dependent on plot for me, I think as a writer, you need to know the things that are happening that the reader does not know about. You need to know what's going on behind the scenes and you need to know where you're going. The things that inspire me to write or the place where I get the, my ideas, I, I think is often just everyday occurrences. Sometimes it's something in the news, um, but sometimes it's just my brain is always working overtime and, it, and I'll and I'll think, well, what if this happened, or what if this happened? And because I'm, I think, a kind of anxious person, I'm always looking at how things can go wrong. And I think, well, what would happen if the mailman delivered the wrong letter to your house? Or what would happen if, uh, you know, you picked up the wrong laptop coming through security at the airport? And, or what do you do when it's 3 o'clock in the morning and your daughter hasn't come home and you can't get hold of her on her mobile phone? So I think about sort of very ordinary things that can go wrong. And, and then I think, well, how would a very ordinary person like myself deal with that? Because I don't write about cops or, or ex-military people or CIA agents. I don't write about those people because I don't know anything about them. But I know about what it's like to be just a kind of regular person. So I like writing about ordinary people who get caught up in extraordinary situations. I don't know that all crime writers are anxious uh, people, or whether they're all riddled with anxiety. I just know that I am. Um, I think that, I don't know, I think that mo writers generally, all kinds of writers, are, are often troubled people. Um, I think there's something about being creative that you have a lot of emotional ups and downs. You know, you're absolutely, you're, you're very excited and very high when you're very creative and then you can get very down when you're not. And so I, I think there's something about being a writer or being a musician or being, you know, an actor that is, is sometimes uh, a kind of emotional roller coaster. And it's, uh, it's awful for the spouses dealing with people like us.